My sister did not know my address. And even if she did, why would she send two trench coat, freaking wife beater buff looking dudes at 3 a.m. here looking for me? Like, best case scenario, they were drug dealers that she owed them money and they were coming. What it is, guys? It's your boy Blasphemous HD. So we're about to do this Try Not To Get Scared Challenge. And it's so much worse because now my house is completely empty, yo. Last night I slept upstairs on the floor. My cats kept freaking waking me up and headbutting me and shit and meowing and shit. I'm half asleep. I can't differentiate between my cat and that little boy from the grudge who kept meowing to kill people. I was all types of scourge. But with that being said, if you guys wanna watch the original video, the link is in the description down below. Make sure to go check him out, subscribe, watch the rest of his other animated videos, cause this guy's freaking awesome. Let it go. This happened four years ago when I was still in high school. I was told to do my last delivery of my shift. I got in my car, which was a 1999 Camry, perfect for delivering pizzas. It really is. I GPS the address on my phone. I live upstate in the country, so all pizza deliveries were long drives. I remember the sun was starting to set, so it was probably around 7 o'clock. I'd say after a good 15 minutes of driving through the foresty dirt roads, my GPS said I had arrived. It was an old little cottage-like house made almost entirely of wood. It was sitting all by itself in the middle of absolutely nothing but forest. The no. lawn was completely unkept, as the grass was almost at knee height. No. I was used to this kind of thing, so I didn't think much of it. I took the pizza to the front door. There was no doorbell, so I knocked loudly on the door. Within ten seconds, I heard the sound of footsteps hitting wood on the inside of the house. The footsteps made it to the door and stopped. I started to feel uneasy. I got the feeling that I was being watched. And that's when I noticed there was a peephole in the door. It's the pizza guy, I called out. I heard a low, harsh sounding voice on the other side of the door, telling me to bring the pizza out back. I didn't like the idea of going back there. Something didn't seem right. Pistol? <laughs> you feel me? You gotta keep the strap on you. Uh, I used to be a pizza guy, actually, and I... Oh man, at least two times, someone almost got beaten with their own pizza. Are you sure, sir? I called out. He didn't answer my question. The sound of footsteps didn't move away from the door, so I had the feeling he was still watching me. I almost found myself walking back to my car, but I decided I didn't want any trouble with my boss. The last time I brought a pizza back, he gave me attitude, so I reluctantly walked through the uncut grass and around the small house to the back. I remember there was a shed and a little patio back there. In the patio, there was a table with four chairs surrounding it. In one of the chairs facing away from me, I saw the head of somebody sitting in the seat. I began walking over and said, excuse me, but the person didn't even move an inch. Excuse me, I said again louder. Then from behind me, I heard, psst, over here. I turned around to see a man poking his head out from the corner of the house, looking at me with a crazed smile. Come over here, I wanna show you something. Yep, I'm a, I'm a, you gonna see it real close when I shoot you in your goddamn kneecap, because below the waist is not, uh, it's not attempted murder. <laughs> Don't ask me why I know that. <laughs> Woo! I freaked out, turned around, and ran around the house in the opposite direction, yeah. back to my car, for some reason still holding- We ain't even gonna talk about a little grudge chick. Swinging on the swing set. And the pizza. I got in my car, started it, and got away from there. On my way back to the pizzeria, I pulled over to the side of the road and called the police. Eventually, I was informed that there was no sign of anybody having been in that house for a long time. I quit my delivery job a few days after that. I have no idea what would have happened to me had I gone up to that man. But to this day, I still wish I had just turned my head to see who or what was sitting in that patio chair. See, and that's what makes Llama Art so good at his animations, man. I swear to God, because that dead body, it looks like it's staring directly into your freaking soul. It was during a blizzard in Valley Stream, 
I was getting paid $250 to watch some couple's kid while they went away for the weekend. His name was Matthew. This took place on the first night, which was Nigga, a Friday good money. night. That's good money. Matthew was already supposedly asleep while I was in the living room watching a movie. I got a knock at the door and looked at the clock. It was close to midnight. No. There was no way I was opening it. Ooh, I had that happen to me, bro. I had these two was trying to rob me at my old apartment. I'm gonna tell y'all the story uh, at the end of this video. That's literally a, a real life scary story for me because I was living in the projects at the time and it was like maybe like four months before I had ever started making YouTube videos. Bruh. Not even 10 seconds later. I heard the sound of two or three men angrily banging on the door, telling me to open up. I felt like my heart was about to stop. I'm going out the window. I'm going out the window. I took through the blinds, and there was somebody standing right on the other side of the window. Oh, that sh oh God! Mother! Oh! 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 I fell no. back in fear. No. And after managing to get back on my feet, no. I ran to the kitchen phone first thing to call the police. They said because of the weather, it I just get so bad I knocked my camera off the thing, bruh. I was told to take the child and hide somewhere until an officer no! arrived. Look, they wanted to you take the child, use him as bait, throw him out there. People like kids, they're tender. Not my kid. Keep me on the line, but I wasn't thinking clearly in the heat of the moment and hung up. However, it wasn't until I ran through the living room that I realized the banging had stopped. I took a second peek through the living room window. Nobody was there now. I heard the sound of glass shattering from a few rooms over. My knees started to feel weak as I realized they had just broken the window and were about to climb into the house. I had to run and get Matthew. I couldn't just leave without him. Of course, when I got upstairs, there was no time left to run back downstairs as I already heard footsteps and laughter coming from downstairs. I covered Matthew's mouth with my hands as I ran with him into his toy closet. A few minutes dragged down to what felt like half an hour as we sat there in the dark closet. Matthew began to squeal as footsteps on the carpet reached the outside of his bedroom door. There was more than one person. They came inside. There weren't many places to hide in this room. I was actually reflecting on my whole life, so sure I was going to die. We heard the sound of a police siren outside, even from in the closet, and then I heard one of the men in the room mutter, "Oh shit. I opened the door back up as I heard at least three pairs of footsteps hurriedly rushing down the stairs. They didn't get far, as the police later found their footprints in the backyard, leading to our shed. There were five men in total, and they were all arrested. Damn that. That's real. This happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Anthony wanted me to come over for the night since his parents would be gone all weekend. I rode my bike over and put it in his backyard before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had, from FIFA all the way to Call of Duty, with popcorn and other junk food spilled out all over the floor. As the night progressed, we moved from video games to watching half a movie and getting bored to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. I love that shit. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few random numbers in hopes to get someone at their house. On, say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up, answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Anthony's laughing in the background made me stumble with my words mid-sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The guy on the other end was silent. I regained a straight face. Y'all can't hear it, but I just farted out of fear. I'm gonna edit that out. Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? What's your name, kid? My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? It hit me like a brick. I looked up at Anthony, whose face was noticeably full of fear. I hung up the phone, not wanting to be on the line with whoever that was for another second. Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. I, I don't know, he told me. 
Does your caller ID info display your name or something? No, it shows my dad's name. We hopped on the computer and did some research, trying to figure out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. It didn't make sense how he could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend, so he didn't want to call. We planned on sleeping in the living room, so we just resumed watching the movie that we hadn't finished from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other when we heard his front storm door opening and then the doorknob to the front door began to turn. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV and I went over to the window to see who it was. No, no! I spread the blinds open. There was a tall guy standing outside. He noticed the blinds moving and turned to look at me. I practically threw the blinds back into- Man, oh. Oh, I don't like this. Place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, listening for any more noises. We heard the sound of the gate to the backyard opening, as it was right outside the kitchen window. God damn it, I said. I forgot to shut the back door. Anthony urged me to run and shut it. I made it to the hallway leading to his back door, and froze. There was a silhouette standing outside the back door. I don't think he noticed me, but... He was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. No, oh, hell no. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned oh. for Anthony to follow mm. me upstairs. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. The doors downstairs all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. The door to the room opened. You could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. Footsteps moved over to the closet, and then the closet opened. I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as the fabric of the jackets and coats rubbed against each other. Footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped. I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. Anthony's breathing was too loud. Oh! I had oh, you kill him immediately! You kill your best friend right there! If I'm ever in a situation, and some people are chasing me, and the nigga next to me, regardless of who, family, friendship, or who it is, if he starts breathing loud, I will slit his throat myself! I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Nothing but silence in the room now. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? I don't know. I'd be so scared, I'd probably get ass naked and jump from up under the bed and just start beating off ferociously. I don't know. Anything to scare somebody away. He was about to answer when the most disturbing memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. Better him than me! I crawled out and saw him struggling with the man. I desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. I'd have desperately looked around for an open window or a door to run out of. Every man for himself, Anthony! It's been a good ten years! I settled with the screwdriver sitting on his nightstand. I hurried over to the man and drove the screwdriver into his back. He let go of Anthony as he let out a scream of agony, giving us time to get the hell out of the house. Running onto the road would give away our position too easily. It would take too long to make it to his neighbor's house. We dove for the tree line in the woods and took cover behind a bush, watching the house. The back door opened as the man stepped outside, looking around the backyard. He then looked out to the woods. I felt his eyes pass me as he scanned through the tree line. It seemed that it was too dark for him to see us. Then, he turned his head back in our direction. I ducked behind the bush. Joe, he's coming. What? 
Dude, get up, we gotta run. He was right. The man was approaching us fast. How could he have seen us? We ran through the woods with the leaves crunching under us, giving away our position. When Anthony tripped over something, I crouched down. I'm telling you, Anthony is a liability, bro. There ain't that much friendship in the world. I'm with him, hoping we had run far enough. Nope. Not even 20 seconds later, on nope. coming footsteps from the direction we were running mm -hmm. from came fast. Anthony is on his own. They slowed down only two trees away from us as we lay face down in the leaves. Moments later, the footsteps take off in another direction. We waited until we could no longer hear them and took off back in the direction of the house. While running, over the sound of leaves crushing and my heavy breathing, I could swear I heard leaves crushing from behind us. We made it back to his backyard, into his house, and this time remembering to shut the back door. We were now able to call the police. Anthony stayed on the line with them while I patrolled the back windows making sure nobody was out there. It was so dark though, I couldn't see anything. So I did something that seems stupid today. I turned on his backyard God! lights and immediately in the distance, over by the woods, I saw him standing in front of a big tree. He turned off back into the woods and disappeared out of sight. That was the last time me or Anthony ever saw him. I would be lying if I told you we heard the occasional knocks at our windows or something cliche. No, that was it. Five years have passed and nothing has happened. Do I wonder if it was somehow linked to the prank call? Maybe. Does it make sense? Not really. But yeah, this was the story of how me and my still best friend Anthony almost died during a break-in. So, let me hook y'all up with this little, with this quick little story. Brad, so look, so this, this happened to me like, uh, so I want to say like maybe four years ago. I was living at University Park Apartments on Maryland Parkway and Flamingo, or at least really close to there. Anybody who's ever lived there knows that the place is like really, really, really ratchet. Like it's, it's damn near the projects. I know a guy who got shot eight times, I think, on his porch because he got into an argument with a guy the night before. Uh, that was literally one apartment down from mine. Another guy got shot at maybe two or three times right in front of my door. Uh, and they found a guy in two different parked cars. And by that I mean they had chopped him into pieces and put him in like different cars on different parts of the apartment complex. You can say this was a pretty bad area. It was about 3 a.m., yo, and I stay up all night for the most part, right? So on this night in particular, I was up playing video games and I was just having a good time in my drawers, man. Y'all already know what to do. I get a knock on my door. Don't ask me why loud knocks freak me the hell out, but they just freaking do. And so I'm like, like, who is it? And the person behind the door says to me, I'm here for I just bleeped out, you know, that name because that's my sister's legitimate name. Now that sister in particular, uh, at that time was heavy into drugs so anyone who knew my sister should not have known where I lived at. I, I took extreme precautions for my sister never to find out where I lived at. So you can imagine that when someone at 3 a.m. says oh we know your sister who is heavy into drugs and has robbed people and done a bunch of crazy stuff before, I did probably the dumbest thing that I could have done in the situation. I opened the door. Now, I'm not gonna lie to y'all and say I wasn't scared. I didn't have any weapons. I, I, I just don't like being put in precarious situations. So I was, I was basically taught from where I lived at and all the situations I've been in is to basically meet every precariously dangerous situation with like, even more anger or something. It's something. So it basically to face it head on, right? So I opened up the door. Now, I was scared, okay? They probably didn't know that, but I was shaking in my drawers, which is the only thing I had on, right? You know, I'm puffed up. I'm, you know, I'm trying to look as big as possible. And I'm like, what's up? It's at that point that I noticed it's not one dude. It's two dudes. The dude who knocked on the door was wearing a trench coat with a hoodie on, which made no sense because this is Vegas and it's hot 
It is really, really hot. It was summertime and it was like 90 degrees outside. The dude behind him is wearing a wife beater. Buff is all living shit, bald, possibly skinhead, I don't know. It just did not look or sound right. When I open the door, they look super duper nervous. And me, I'm nervous because they looking like they own some, some of that, you know what I mean, home invasion type shit. So I'm like, yo, what's up? And now that I think about it, this was probably either the smartest thing I could have done or either the dumbest thing I could have done. Because in their eyes, if a dude at 3 a.m. opens up his door and is mad aggressive at them, even though there's two of them, and one of them is huge, I've got to know something that they don't. I probably look like I got all the pistols and or gangbanger friends in the back room, which is probably why they started apologizing so profusely, which is another alarm bell for me, because why are you apologizing? You ain't do nothing. Right? If you really know my sister the way you say you know my sister and or you're just showing up because you're, you know, you want to see where my sister is because they said, yo, we're here looking for which makes no sense because my sister did not know my address. And even if she did, why would she send two trench coat, freaking white beater buff looking dudes at 3 a.m. here looking for me? Like, best case scenario, they were drug dealers that she owed them money and they were coming to one of the addresses that they got from her or someone else to where she could have been at to collect money, which is again, not better. It's still freaking bad. Me, I like, I, and they, and they do do that. If you don't have their money, they start going to your family's house to look for your money. I used to live in areas, I've witnessed a bunch of this type of stuff happening. So I'm standing there and you know, me, I'm in fight or flight. You know, and I didn't really have any place to run. There's no back doors in these apartments. The windows are all barred up. You know, what, what am I gonna do? I'm not just gonna turn around and let you have at it. You feel me? That's what happens in prison. I'm not in jail. Luckily enough for me, I guess the fact that I was so confidently angry and like aggressive towards them in my draws, it freaked them out enough as the words are like, this is not the house to rob. This is not the place to come back to. But this is not the this is not the right one. We need weaker human to rob. So I forgot what they said when they left because they left. I was free, you know what I mean. In my mind, I'm freaking out. I've got a whole composure. A lot of people think that when you live in the hood and when you're dealing with these type of situations, that it's you feel good doing it and it's easy. It's not. No matter how many of these dangerous situations you get put in, it's always fear. But when you live in the areas that I grew up in, you kind of learn to use fear as a sort of superpower to get you to do shit you know that you normally and rationally don't have the courage to do. That's why it's so funny to me whenever I see these rap videos of people like, yeah, man, I'm in the hood and I got the cat on me and the strap and I love this stuff. Like, no, nigga, there ain't no love. Niggas ain't in the hood because they wanna be. Niggas in the hood because rent is like double in the suburbs. Shit, if not, four times that. You know what I mean? Needless to say, uh, uh, they rode out. I was, I was scared for like a full on three weeks after that because I thought that they were going to go get more people and come back, but they never did. I never saw those guys again. The guys looked so freaking mean. That's the, and that's, and that's what it was. If you're, if you're looking for my sister at 3 a.m. in the morning, there's no reason to be mean mugging as hard as those guys were at 3 a.m. in the morning, knocking on supposedly their friend's brother's door. That, 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 that makes no sense. You know what I mean? Take it from me, man. Living in the hood sucks, bruh. When you get money, get the hell out. You see, I'm in the suburbs now. That's real. Shit, if you do get money and you live in the hood, leave and change all your friends. Don't be friends with nobody who ain't trying to come up the same way you is. You know what I'm saying? Cause all you is, if you stay in the hood and you get money, is a lick or a sucker. In which case, suckers are meant to be licked. So you're still a lick, just slower and more wet. Yeah, that crap happened. Uh, I've got so many stories of stuff like that happening to me while living in the projects. I used to live in Joshua Villa's projects and dude, uh, there was a guy who was who was smashing 
who I'm almost ashamed to say he was he was smashing my sister and he was shermed out and had a gun on him and apparently some people were looking for him and God Jesus oh I'll tell y'all that story I don't know man sometime later man I'll, I'll tell y'all that story later man but I'm glad that I didn't, that I wasn't put in a situation where I would have had to grab their penises and pull because these niggas, the, the, the thinking back was way bigger than me. I don't know what I would have had. I don't know. I didn't have no weapons on me. You feel me? I basically bluffed. Dude, I've bluffed my way out of being shot at least five times, yo. And I'm not even joking. I remember one guy pulled a gun on me on the bus on Maryland Parkway because my little brother stepped on his shoe. He started like, you know, with that thug woofing at my brother. And I'm like, yo, that's my little brother. He stepped on your shoe, you know, his bad, but you are not gonna, you know, aggressively come at my brother like that. What's up? And he pulled his gun out of his backpack and I immediately started uh, uh, apologizing to that guy because he already had the gun out what can i do you know what i mean weirdly enough i don't know how i was able to but i literally was able to become friends with him in that situation at that moment and then some other guy tried to pick on my little brother and then that guy who just wanted to shoot me like literally four minutes before tried to fight that guy in front of his two kids that's another story that I haven't told you guys that I I have so many stories that I, I I'm remembering the stories it, I need to start telling y'all stories bro because I, I I got so many of them and I don't and whenever I get around a whole bunch of people especially like white people especially youtubers and shit and it's not no racist shit but like white people who grow up in these type of areas they don't never have those type of situations luckily enough like because they're they're smart enough to stay the hell out of those areas but you know me i couldn't because i didn't have no cheddar when i was younger so i have a lot of these stories man and the worst thing dude that so with that being said man hope you guys enjoyed the video uh make sure to subscribe to llama arts ah this is like an hour long video man this was not on purpose uh, make sure to subscribe to Llama Arts. The link to the original video is in the description down below. I am going to finish doing more of these. Um, and I'll tell another story in the next one. But, uh, but you guys got to make sure to go check out Llama Arts. And watch the rest of the original video on his channel. Uh, let go. I mean, I mean uh, but also subscribe to me. You know, because, you know, <laughs> I said so. Hope you guys are having a great day. Twisms. Yeah.